Welcome to Soul Winners University. We're so glad you can be with us this Monday evening at 7 p.m. Central Time. And this is our third episode of Soul Winners University. We want to um, try to inspire you and help you with your efforts to reach other people in this lost world. As we're approaching uh, some of the darkest days that this world has ever known, as the Lord prepares to come back, we want to make sure that we do all we can to reach every last person that we can. Tonight I want to speak to you about something I'm very passionate about in soul winning, and I think it's probably one of the top um, two things that you can do to reach people in a massive amount of uh, souls, and that's going to be bus ministry. So I want to speak to you tonight about bus ministry and some things uh, that I've learned along the route of picking up people and winning souls through the bus routes. I want to help you tonight, and I want to t start by telling you about some of the inspiration that I've had to become a, a person that's involved in bus ministry. First of all, we live right now in a city called Michigan City, Indiana, and just about 15 or 20 miles um, west of here is a place called Hammond, Indiana. And in Hammond, Indiana, was well known in the 70s for the largest church our Sunday school church in the world. And that was pastored by a guy named Jack Hiles. You can do some research maybe and Google him, maybe even listen to some of the messages that he used to preach back in the 70s. But Jack Hiles was the largest church and Sunday school in the world at that time in the 70s. And the reason why is because he used buses to go out all the way to Chicago and then all the way to South Bend and everywhere between there. So they have hundreds of buses that they would run. And they basically perfected the bus ministry as we know it today. Uh, they were very passionate about it and they built a big church uh, with thousands and thousands of people that still exist in today. They also have a Bible school and all kinds of other things over there in Hammond because of this bus ministry alone. The second place that the inspiration that I had was from a guy named Bill Wilson. And I hope you can have time to Google Bill Wilson and maybe watch some of his passionate videos about reaching people and children. Uh, but Bill Wilson is from Brooklyn, New York, and he current, uh, pastors the current largest Sunday school in the world. It's in Brooklyn, New York. He runs buses all through that area, uh, picking up children and helping children uh, throughout that area, which is a very impoverished and uh, broke down area of the country. But he still has that passion to reach the children. Amen. Uh, the next uh, church and next inspiration that I've really had uh, in this bus ministry ministry uh, is Life Church or Life Challenge Church. It's in Odessa, Texas, and it's Pastor Smeltzer. I had the opportunity to hold a revival there a couple times, and um, I got to go through his facility and, and uh, all his buses. Uh, back then, he had buses that had themes on them, so one would be like a cow bus or a horse bus or different types of things like that. And then once you went inside the church, they had it set up incredibly. Uh, every little aspect of the church for Sunday school ministry and bus ministry, it, it was possibly the best uh, I've ever seen. And because they were so passionate about each uh, opportunity to reach the children. And if you ever get a chance or if you're ever in Odessa, Texas or anywhere in that area where you can maybe drive out of your way to go visit them. Uh, I recommend Life Challenge Church today, Pastor Dan Smelzer. Or even connect to them on Facebook and you can kind of follow along with the progress that they're doing with bus ministry. The, third, or the fourth one would be the Pentecostal of, uh, of the Alexandria. We've uh, had an opportunity to be down there many times uh, with Pastor Anthony Megan, and we've actually been able to tour the bus area, the bus ministry, and uh, got to learn a lot of things from the bus uh, ministry people in his church. Uh, at Anthony Megan, at one time, I know they were bringing in a thousand or so people just on their bus ministry, and their buses are even uh, used and utilized by the school system. So it's a very big ministry in the Pentecostal of Alexander, Louisiana. And finally, uh, the first Pentecostal church in Durham, North Carolina. One of my heroes, Pastor um, Johnny Goder, uh, has been passionate about reaching people on bus ministry for many years and has built that church on reaching young children and families through his bus ministry. And I hope you can uh, maybe kind of Google these uh, different places that I've mentioned and maybe catch a little bit of fire for bus routes and bus ministry just the same way I did. But I want to start today by talking to you about the, the 
beginning uh, starting area of bus routes and bus ministry, and that would become uh, prayer. You would have to start everything that you do for God in prayer. Talk to God and see uh, if you can hear his voice, if you can hear something that maybe he would speak to you about a certain area of ministry and bus ministry or anything that you do for God, uh, it all starts with prayer. Then you want to try to, after you pray about it, you feel like God is uh, giving you the, the go-ahead for starting bus ministry, then you want to start to have some helpers. And you want to make sure these helpers are with you as much as possible so that uh, when you're not available, that these people can also cover cover the areas that you're at and uh, attend to it, maybe if you're on vacation or things like that. So you want to be sure to have helpers and make sure these helpers are trained the proper way to carry on your bus ministry. Once you have the prayer and the helpers, then you want to start out by ordering some flyers or church cards. Uh, we all always talk about it here in uh, Soul Winners University, but make sure you have something uh, like a larger card. These are four by six cards. You can have these printed up. Uh, you can usually get about 5,000 of them for less than $200 delivered to you. Uh, but this is a bigger card, so it's easier to hand out to someone. It's easier for them not to lose it because it's so big. We also recommend when you're making flyers that you go to a place, uh, they have them at uh, Sam's Club and different places like that where they have wholesale large amounts, but you can buy big large boxes of fruit stacks. You want to have some type of candy or something to give out when you're handing out uh, flyers and, and, and invitations to the church and the bus ministry. The kids love candy, obviously, right? Uh, we just had Halloween uh, all over the world and uh, the kids go out by the multitudes. I was driving around our city and seeing thousands and thousands of people out just for a piece of candy. And so, you know, when you're out, use the wisdom that, that the world tries to use and use this wisdom for God and for good. Go buy as much candy as you possibly can. And every time you're out into these areas you go to, uh, hand out a church card and a flyer or a fruit snack. And I'm telling you, you'll get have a gathering of people that you can, uh, every time you go out to visit them, they'll run to you, they'll ask you for candy, whatever, and make sure you have that available to them. Not only flyers, but they have door hangers that you can purchase. You can put whatever information you want on those door hangers. You can have your church information, what time the bus arrives at their location. You can also uh, have the time of the services and phone numbers and things like that. But it's very, very important that you use door hangers, especially in the areas that we're going to talk about in just a few minutes that you're going to go to to, to try to reach people. The candy part of it, uh, it's pretty inexpensive when you can uh, figure you can just buy, I think, a, a pack of a box of fruit snacks that come with 72 fruit snacks for like $11. Uh, if you buy two or three boxes of those and go out, it, it's plenty enough candy uh, to be able to do what you're trying to do to attract the kids. The next thing is you have to pray about being faithful. One of the things about my bus ministry, you can never, ever miss, right? So if you plan a bus ministry and you set it up and you've got everything going, you don't ever want to miss picking up these children on a certain Sunday or whatever week or day you're going to do it. Um, because when you're unfaithful, they're used to that, and that's something that uh, people are not attracted to, unfaithfulness. They're attracted to people who are faithful, and they can help them, and they're going to depend on them being there every single Sunday. So make sure uh, that you're faithful. If you start this bus route, you're going to show up every single Saturday uh, for outreach, and you're going to come every single Sunday for service to pick them up. And then you'll start to develop the relationship and be able to build souls for the kingdom of God very easily if you keep faithful in this. That's one of the reasons why we talked about helpers, because we want to have uh, several people available just in case some emergency would happen or anything would happen where you're not able to go to these locations and be faithful to picking up the kids and the families. So make sure you're faithful in all this. Then you want to pray about an area to go to. I highly recommend going to places like uh, apartment complexes, trailer parks, um, areas where large amounts of people gather uh, so that you can pass out more flyers and, and more uh, candy and things in that area, and you can go to that location and pick up more people. You can also go to uh, some of the hotels now are doing like weekly rentables and things like that where you can find families in those areas. But wherever you go, you want to try to make sure to go back to that place every single week. Try to pick four to five locations if possible. 
um, that you can sow into these areas every single Saturday because you want to you want to have an outreach every Saturday going into these locations with the candy and flyers. You want to stop um, every single Saturday at the same time. I recommend going in the afternoon. If you go in early in the morning, most people are still sleeping or they're still uh, tired uh, from the night before on the Friday night or whatever. The kids have maybe stayed up a little bit later. And you want to try to go in the afternoon, maybe 2 o'clock I would recommend. And when you go to these locations, you're going to pick the area with the most doors in it, like the apartment complexes where you can hang the hangers really fast and uh, gather a crowd together. And also, once you have these areas selected, you want to maybe um, have some of the church folks go out there and have a small block party. Maybe go out there with some grills and some uh, food to cook and uh, some drinks and things like that or start a puppet show. Uh, I remember we used to do the puppet shows out of our bus, so we could just put like uh, black paper on some of the windows and then the windows where we were going to put the puppets out, uh, it would be clear. We would have a puppet show right there in the, the apartment complex. That drew a lot of people, also feeding people. There's an old saying that says, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So it's very important to love these people, to serve them. And to let them know that you're not there just to take them to church, but you're there to help them and bless them. And that's how you start the bus ministry. In these areas, you're going to find that when you go back there every single time, they're going to start calling you by your first name. They're going to run to you as soon as you pull up because you're the person that's giving them hope. You're the person that's offering them something that's peaceful like Jesus. And you're going to be uh, doing an amazing ministry by going to these different areas. You want to next think about the buses and vans that you're going to use. Uh, we recommend trying to go uh, purchase school buses. I know uh, through the years the devil has lied to the church and made us believe that it's just so expensive to run buses and it's so uh, costly to, to run a bus. It's probably the cheapest uh, form of um, transportation you can find. Don't listen to people that are negative. I've been doing bus ministry for many years and I can tell you you can generally buy a 72 passenger or 80 passenger bus, uh, and, and I'll give you a good location. If you go to gov.com, uh, or no, what is it here? Um, I'll have to maybe put it in the link below. But there's a, there's a website where you can go pick up used buses, um, and all the school systems advertise them on this uh, auction area. And you can go to this site and you can put your bid in for a bus, and sometimes you can buy it for $2,500. A really nice bus that just came off of the school system use. And you take that bus, and I recommend painting it a different color uh, so it's not yellow like the regular, regular school buses. We used um, regular house paint, latex paint, and we would paint over the whole entire bus white. And then in Atlanta, we had a, um, a guy who did graffiti, so we would let our buses stand out. Uh, down there, we had Atlanta Hope Center, so we had the same person come and do the graffiti on the buses every single week, and it was amazing. But once you purchase a bus, um, I think it's govdeals.com is the, the name of the website. It's G-O-V-D-E-A-L-S.com, and you can go in there and select buses, and you can see all the buses across the country that are becoming available. Put your bid on them. I, I've never had bad uh, experience with them. Every time I've ever purchased one with them, it's always been something that was dependable and got me to where I was going. Uh, picking up people. But the buses, um, it, it the, probably the most expensive thing would be the fuel, but um, it's not going to be any more expensive than running vans uh, on fuel. You can buy insurance very cheap um, and make sure that you go to shop around for your insurance prices on that. And I think that if you bought a bus, and just start out with one bus or uh, maybe a shuttle bus of some type, picking up maybe 15 to 20 people and then build it from there. But you're going to see that there's a lot of people that want to come. In building the bus ministry, you want as many people as possible. So my goal and my vision has always been that our church would have as many buses in the parking lot as the school system has in their bus barn. And we would be able to pick up so many more people that way. You can also use vans. Uh, vans are effective. You can uh, you know, pretty much get a hold of a van almost anywhere. I noticed that they have gone up quite a bit in price, so it's kind of harder to pick up a 15-passenger, 12-passenger van. However, there's hundreds of churches out there that have 
vans parked in their church parking lot, and they rarely, if ever, use them. They sit there week after week and uh, never use. And if I could just put a plea out there today, if you're not using your bus, if you're not using your van, would you please consider sending it to the Hope Center here in Michigan City, Indiana? We'll come and get it or whatever has to happen for us to make that uh, happen with our bus ministry. We will put it to use and we will fill it up with souls. And if that's the purpose you have it, then why not send it to someone that will use it? And if we have so many of them that come here, then we'll uh, you know, help assist other places that are trying to start a bus ministry by giving them a bus or van. It's something that the kingdom of God really has to get a hold of and grasp that uh, some churches have the ability to bless other churches. That's not a bad thing. It, it's, uh, if you're going to bless someone, wouldn't it be wonderful to bless a work that is actually winning souls and bringing people to the kingdom of God? I know a lot of churches say, well, you know, we don't have money for bus ministry. Well, sadly, and I don't want this to sound negative, but those same churches that tell me those kinds of things have the best sound system that you can buy. They have the best pews. They have the best instruments. They have the best of everything. But when it comes to bus ministry and uh, putting out money to reach other people, so somehow they're just broke and don't have it. If that's you today, God bless you. I'm not going to condemn you. Um, but send an offering to the Hope Center. We could use it. We could use it for gas and putting our fuel in our buses. And uh, we'll love you and pray for you on the way. How's that? So buses and vans are a very big part of it. You need to be able to move people. And uh, moving people the best way is on these school buses that are retired. And you can pick up those on GovDeals.com. The finances of your ministry, um, it, it is, there is cost involved. Uh, we spend approximately, I would say, $50 every week on fuel uh, for our bus and, um, and then the cost of uh, the candy and the things like that, the flyers, whatever. Um, so make sure you set aside a, a funding for that. Maybe take an offering every once in a while to be able to support the bus ministry. Or if you're starting on your own and your church doesn't have the money, uh, you can set so into it yourself. I can't tell you how many years I've paid for our own buses, our own fuel, our own candy, uh, and everything to try to win the souls to the church. Um, I've done it all my ministry, all my whole entire uh, walk with God. I, I went out and bought buses with my own money, traded cars in for buses, things like that, because of the effectiveness of it. You know, bringing people to the kingdom of God is very easy. The next thing we want to talk about is having your church ready. Uh, this is very important. You're going to be bringing in a lot of people, and when you bring these people in, you have to have the mindset in a church that souls are the most important thing to look at. Kids are going to come in, they're not going to be clean, they're going to be cussing, they're going to be rowdy, they're going to be bad, if you can say that. Um, they're going to cause a lot of disturbance and destruction in your church. So be ready for it. You know, if you have ushers that can help, that's amazing. If you have Sunday school teachers that, that can help, that's amazing. But I remember going to one church and every one of the Sunday school teachers, after they were claiming that they wanted to have revival, they wanted to have souls come to their church. And when the church started seeing all these people come in, uh, the Sunday school teachers wanted to quit because they said that they didn't want bad children around these other good children. And they wanted to separate the bus children from the church children. And what an awful idea that was, because I want to let you understand something. These children would never have an opportunity to become better if they can't be around people who could show them and give them the example of better. So if we segregate these children because they're bad or because they're uh, dirty or whatever reason you might want to do that, you're actually doing something that's evil and it's not right with God. Give these children the best opportunity. I understand sometimes they're going to need correction. You can put them on timeout. Uh, you can say, hey, you know what, you can't come this week because we want to make sure that you're coming for the right reason. I've done that many times with children. Uh, but you, you can find good children that are really, honestly, looking for the, the church service every single week. They literally stand on the corner waiting for you to come and pick them up so that they can have just a little space of peace in their life. And that's what the bus ministry is about. It's about souls. It's about developing people. And it takes a long time. I don't know if I said it last week, but the average fruit tree does not bear fruit until five years. The same thing with souls. They're not going to bear fruit. They're not going to show this 
uh, great uh, progression in her life until after five years of living for God. We have to have patience. We have to love them. We have to give them the opportunity to grow just like you and I were given. Amen. So I want to also talk to you about a couple books that I have uh, read. Number one, uh, there's a book by Bill Wilson. I spoke about him from Brooklyn, New York just a few minutes ago. Uh, Bill Wilson wrote a book called Whose Child Is It? And if you can download that or uh, order it on Amazon, I think it would be a great inspiration for you. You can also maybe um, contact some of the churches I listed above and ask them to speak to someone in their bus ministry that can help give you ideas or uh, help you with this. I know uh, Aubrey Betts in Durham, North Carolina, and Brother uh, Johnny Godair's church, um, that's, I think, his granddaughter. And I, they have put out recently a material booklet that you can purchase uh, for very little money, and it's already got all the information in it for starting the bus route, which I highly recommend. And any, any materials you can get, you don't have to agree with it all, you don't have to use it all, but if you can pull a little bit from each resource and start building your bus ministry to become uh, great, uh, why couldn't your church be the next largest Sunday school in the world? Why couldn't your church be the greatest uh, ministry for picking up and loving children as all these other churches have already done in the past? So, also wanted to say um, there's a video out, and I really ask you to watch it tonight uh, since we're talking about bus ministry. And it's by Larry Carter. And you can go on YouTube and download it. It's also on my page here at the Soul Winter University. If you scroll through it, you'll be able to watch it. Uh, but it's called Sunday School Girl, and it was written, and um, there's a video out by Larry Carter performing and singing that song. And it very basically breaks down why we're doing this. Because there's children living in rough homes where they don't have any peace at all, and they go through life in, in a struggle, and all they have is hope that on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon that a church bus can come by and pick them up and change their life, bringing this peace to them and bringing this um, love to them that they've never experienced. It's something that every bus ministry could be focused on is trying to just, if you could just change one child. I remember as a young man going to church on the bus, I wasn't uh, too good in church back then, but it was someone that really touched my life because they took time out of their life to come and pick us up as bad as we were. Uh, but so winning and bus ministry go hand in hand together. As you begin to develop these children's lives and these families' lives, you're going to see just a great revival in your church. Jesus said, suffer the children to me, for this is the kingdom of God. And when you're reaching children and you're blessing children, loving children, you're doing the will of God like no other will of God that you've ever done. So try to pray about it and try to catch a passion for it, and God's going to bless you for doing it. Don't forget to order some church cards. We also have Denise um, Behringer, and she, I've got a link on my page about her. She designs all of our materials. She can help you for like $100 design a full-color card or a door hanger or some type of flyer that you can pass out. Um, she does it very quickly, and she's very anointed and talented. Uh, I really highly recommend uh, Denise Behringer, and you can connect with her on that link on my page. Don't forget also... We have a book called Understanding Soul Winning. In this book, one of the chapters is bus ministry. Uh, if you want to pick up a copy, you can just simply send me a message, or we have a link on there with a picture of the book where you can scan the uh, QR code, and it's either paid by PayPal or Venmo or Cash App or one of those. We charge $15 for the book and $6 for shipping, uh, and we ship it through FedEx. You'll get it uh, pretty fa fairly quickly. I believe this book can really help you in your walk with God and also helping you with trying to win a soul. If you've never won a soul or if you just really started thinking, man, I really should be winning people to God, I would recommend this book, not just because it's mine, but because everything in this book is effective tools that I've used for years, and it still works today. One of them being the heaven or hell method where we talk to people out on the street when we first meet them and we compel them to repent and be baptized uh, right then on the spot. It would be a great tool for you and a great book for your library. We hope you can take your order today. We also want to encourage you uh, to go through the Go uh, Soul Winners um, University page and always scroll all the way down to the bottom uh, because we've placed so much material on there. Uh, and if you just maybe joined Soul Winners University or for the first time logged in, you maybe didn't see that information in that material. So just be sure to go all the way through the uh, page 
try to collect as much information as you can. We try to put all the information in the comment section as well as a post all individually by itself so that you can learn the best you can. We're going to get ready to close tonight. We want to encourage you to continue to reach people, continue to talk to people, continue to do everything you can to try to get somebody to come to the kingdom of God. It's not as hard as you think. If you'll pray about it, I'm sure God is looking for people. The Bible says that the uh, harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. And we understand that right now we're in a, a time when the Lord is about to come back, and it's time to get work for Jesus. So if you can get work working for Him, God's going to bless you and your family. We thank you and love you. We'll see you next time on Soul Winners University.